Welcome to the uh, day two of the uh, Farms.Commerce Management U.S. Corn Belt Crop Tour. It's uh, Saturday, June 27th, and it's a rainy day. We started in Ohio uh, sunny, but it's been uh, cloudy and uh, rainy, flash floods uh, since. And we're in front of a soybean field east of Highway 144 near Rushville, Indiana. And... Um, these beans are looking, uh, the state of Indiana is looking a little bit better, but again, compared to what we saw last year, nothing like last year in the state of Indiana, including uh, the size of the corn. It looks like these beans were probably planted late. Uh, there seems to be some issues with spraying, some disease pressure um, due to wet weather. Uh, again, these crop conditions have to start to change. The, it's, it needs to stop raining. We need to start to get some heat. Just to give you a little bit of a background on Indiana, in the last USDA crop progress report, the USDA stated that uh, soys in the very poor to poor category jumped to 5% to 10%. Soy is in the good to excellent, down 10% from 70 to 60. Corn jumped 2% in the very poor to poor to 7%. Um, good to excellent dropped 8% to 70%. Soft red winter wheat jumped 10%, very poor to poor, and good to excellent down 15%. So uh, we're going to continue uh, down the road and we'll keep you posted in the state of Indiana. We're now in front of a corn field. Uh, we're traveling north on Highway 44 near Man Manila, Indiana, and uh, we're finally starting to see a little bit more consistency in the corn. This is some of the best corn we've seen thus far after traveling uh, through Ohio. But again, it's not quite what I saw last year in Indiana. By, by almost July 1st last year in Indiana, we had corn that was tasseling. It was that much taller, and we had ears. Um, so delayed, uh, despite the early planting this year, um, wet weather probably uh, uh, delaying and installing some of the growth in this crop, but it, it looks lush and green. We're still traveling uh, north on Highway 67 near Muncie, Indiana, and folks, this is not a bin buster. This is a bean field. I'm almost knee deep in water. Um, this is night and day compared to last year. We're now uh, south of uh, Covington, Indiana, traveling towards Terre Haute, and we're in front of an average corn field. And uh, we're with Ken Kura from Pride Seeds. Ken, I really want to thank you for your time and uh, no for uh, joining us on our tour thus far. Unfortunately, he has to leave early on our tour, but wanted to get his thoughts on, on what he saw and uh, some of his conclusions. Um, Ken, we've seen a lot of ugly fields, a lot of moisture. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so you hit it right on the head. This crop just in general from from Toledo, Ohio, swinging down to Columbus, Cincinnati and, and across through Indianapolis. Indianapolis being as that's usually such a good production area, probably the most disappointing driving 28 across there from Muncie, yep. Anderson and across to, uh, you know, to uh, the Peoria, direction of Peoria, uh, just too much water. And, you know, I always refer to June as a crop establishment month. Well, it looks like there's a lot of acres that unestablished themselves in the last three weeks. And we've heard that from farmers and, uh, you know, the ones we've talked to is, is, is so many fields that looked so good seven to ten days ago and have really deteriorated in yellow, waterlogged, not getting oxygen to the roots. And what remains to be seen is how those acres recover. And the next seven to ten days forecast, from what you and I have looked at, doesn't really show that much for their recovery. Uh, soybeans. It, it really is clear there's two different planting windows on soybeans here. They're the ones that they're able to get in, which I think is a good chunk of the acres. They're able to get in in good shape. And uh, then it looks like it's been a struggle from there and definitely getting herbicide on has been a huge struggle for these guys on soybeans. We've even heard on, uh, on corn acres where, uh, you know, post applied nitrogen is not on. And, and we're talking fields that are four or five feet tall in some cases. And, uh, you know, one case this morning, six foot tall corn doesn't have any herbicide on it yet. Right. Can't get into the field. So there's some huge challenges there for sure. And they're all going to translate to some degree of yield loss. Right. So do you, uh, do, you, um, do you think as an agronomist, um, 
that the crops are moving backwards? Yeah, so going backwards is one of those great terms that people like to use. Uh, I don't like to use the term going backwards, but certainly stalled is uh, is the way to put it. You know, water logging, you know, a crop biologist will tell you, it, it basically stalls the, the advancement of the crop towards maturity. So, and, and of course, there's other acres that are sitting on top of tiles. We've seen a pile of tile run acres in both corn and beans. You know, so acres where the water could get away soon enough, they look fantastic and just make everything else look worse, hence the term going backwards. Um, you know, so they're definitely stalled. Could be some pollination issues there. Uh, one of the things we saw north of Indianapolis quite a bit was such waterlogged soils and green healthy corn from, you know, from our thighs to, to six feet tall is gonna struggle now with lodging issues because the ground's so waterlogged. So there's some issues there for sure. One last question, uh, Ken. Um, you know, last year rain made grain and there's gonna be a lot of arguments that all this moisture is gonna make grain. Do you, do you agree with that statement? Uh, so to some degree I agree with that statement. Historically rain has made grain uh, at critical times of course, but in general rain makes grain. I drive around and I see, you know, on this tour the last two days, we've seen some acres that are just black green, beautiful dark green color, even though they may be a bit uneven. There's no question, you know, rain and especially warm rains and warm soil temps, they flush nitrate up into the plant. Uh, even though those fields, if they're if they're entirely green right now, even though they might be a bit uneven, there's phenomenal yield potential in there if the rest of the season cooperates, and especially the next 10 days. If those root zones can dry out and the weather cooperates, you know, uh, that corn has got a foundation for yield. If that corn's yellow, uh, like I said, we're unestablishing acres at this point. We're, we're literally looking at eight leaf corn that is wilting down purple yellow, waterlogged and choked off and dying. And if that continues through, uh, you know, if this weather forecast for the next 10 days for the Midwest is even 50% correct, it's not going to be conducive to those acres recovering at all. Does rain make grain on those acres? Definitely not. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, we appreciate it very much. No problem. Thanks, Mo. We're traveling south on uh, Highway 63, just south of Covington, Indiana. And folks, I've been disappointed to date. We've just seen too much moisture uh, do too much damage to too many soybeans and cornfields. And uh, I'm surprised now because I'm standing in front of a cornfield that's tasseled. We don't have any ears yet, but it is tasseled. So um, that's good news uh, as we travel further south into Indiana. Uh, but, um, you know, if I was to conclude for the state of Indiana, we're, we're, we're almost done here for the day, June 27th, uh, I got to think that uh, the yields are going to be down. There's just too much moisture. Uh, there's more moisture in the forecast. Um, but this type of corn, probably 5-10% of the total, uh, majority of what we saw was not looking good. Um, and Indiana is one of those big I states, one of the top five corn and soybean producing states. So at the end of the day, I think it's going to bring the average down, folks. Um, and so I think the yield going forward uh, is going to have to drop. I want to thank my sponsors, Pride Seed, Tasco Dome, Penta Tillage, and Southwest Ag Partners, as well as you, the viewer. Thank you.